There is such an ecstasy in the submission and orphan-like leaning on the right arm of the Mevlevi dervish performing the whirling dance. The whirling dance is impressive because even a person without the slightest knowledge of Mevlevi teachings and practices immediately perceives that the whirling dance indicates an entirely different world. In fact, the whirling dance and Mevlana are the door opening to a truth beyond our known and accustomed world. Come, let's try to open this door part way. There is something hidden in every human being's heart, given the name of secret according to Mevlana and Islamic Sufism. There is a secret that turns in our heart. Everything created is connected to that secret. Even this sky, in layers, turns because of this. This secret is not given to every person. It can only be reached by lengthy efforts and kind deeds. This secret is what the great Turkish mystical poet Yunus Emre meant when he said, There is a self in me, within myself. Indian philosophy and mysticism gave the names of sublime self or Atma to this secret. The expression, know thyself, in classical Greek civilization calls people to know this secret self hidden in the heart. Throughout history, the spiritual essence of Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic Sufism have always struggled to make known this internal unknown self. What we have tried to understand and open up is a secret. Some persons who have reached this secret are tongue-tied because they assume the state of knowing what is not known. As they cannot know what is not known, there are no words to describe it. Perhaps because of this, Mevlana chose poetry, dancing, and music to describe what is undescribable. However, before he was called Mevlana as a title of respect, he was Jalaluddin Rumi, he taught at the madrasa and gave sermons at the mosque. He was a respected, contented Sufi and a very beloved scholar. Mevlana received his first education from his father. After his father's death, he continued with his father's student. He went to Aleppo and Damascus. He talked with the greatest scholars and Sufists of the period. He was moist clay in the hands of these masters. His fate was to enter into the mold of his teachers and to be baked in the oven. He would be alone like everyone while being baked. Finally, when the secret fire that he called the inner love flared up, it would burn to ashes everything he knew as Jalalettin. Weren't all of these preparations for that moment? According to Mevlana, love is such a strong fire that, other than God, it burns all creatures and their relations and destroys them. This burning is needed to become fully humanized for those who are created from clay and soil. According to Mevlana, the evolution of human beings has not yet been completed because human beings were created to be mature, perfect, and complete. To be the perfect man does not mean to become a person who is good, ethical, philanthropic, and full of love. As long as there is the ego, even to think that we can have these attributes is to deceive oneself, because the ego cannot see beyond its own selfish and urgent interests. To be the perfect man means to abandon all known positive and negative feelings and habits and to take on the unrecognized and unknown consciousness and essence different from the ego. This change starts in the heart of persons with the shining of the divine fire and light.
This is a complete transformation in the mind, in the brain cells, and in the atoms of the body. This is a transformation into an existence where the body becomes lighter and transparent. The curtain is raised. The views become definite. Everything is seen and known and is an existence that can exist everywhere. According to the mystical currents, it is possible for human beings to be everything in a completely different dimension of consciousness. When a seed or pit is broken, there appears to be nothing inside. However, this nothing is the essence of a tree. Thus, just like this, billions and billions of years ago, prior to the Big Bang, nothing was the essence of everything. This situation, for which no rule or law of physics works, is called in Sufism personal destiny, which cannot be comprehended by any human being or the hidden abode of God Almighty. God, within the complete solitude of this abode, when it was a secret treasure, turned to himself and watched the magnificence of the essence. He loved this essence and spread love. He wanted this perfect treasure to be known and created the light and shape of himself. This was a complete shape that reflected the godly consciousness. The Islamic religion calls this the light of Muhammad, but what is meant is the light of all the prophets and the saints of Buddhism, Christianity and Sufism and the light of the perfect man. This godly light that is formed with the divine laws cannot even be imagined and is the essence of all creatures and the everlasting flame of life. We cannot recognize this essence that has the flawless shape of God with our existing senses. It is not like any sort of substance that can be touched and seen. There is also the spiritual existence of human beings within this light. God, when he wants something to become, says, be, and it immediately becomes. This be command has been given to the shape of God, the Almighty Spirit, in the world that is the abstraction of the abstract. The Almighty Spirit received the command, descended, and the universe started to form. Within the first second of this bang, atoms were formed, and with the uniting of the atoms, the suns, stars, and the worlds were composed. The Almighty Spirit descended from the Supreme Being to the world of nature and entered into substance. However, only human beings were created in the shape of God. That is, God gave human beings a soul from himself. Briefly, human beings have a spiritual structure that is not part of this world and universe. According to Sufism, this spirit forms the real self of human beings and it descended by degrees to this universe from other worlds, from the world of spirits and angels, and it became apparent by wearing the bodily apparel of this world and universe. It is very natural for the spiritual presence, not belonging here, to yearn for its homeland. Human beings equate themselves with their own body in the concrete world, and there is actually the longing of separation behind the yearning felt for goods, property, position, fame, and power. One day this pain of separation envelops and embraces the self so much that it starts crying and lamenting. How could it not cry? The place left behind is the presence of the unity, Almighty God. Thus, the reed flute is the symbol of this soul that has separated from its real homeland. The reed flute, with its melancholy, sad and moving sound, is expressing its yearning to God to be reunited with the reed bed from which it was separated. I said to that reed flute that cries and moans, Who caused your suffering? Who are you complaining about? It said, I was cut 
from a reed with sweet lips. It is the pain of separation that makes me lament. The stages passed until entering into the shape of human beings after abandoning the presence of God resemble the stages passed from the breaking off of the reed from the reed bed until it enters the shape of the reed flute. The reed flute master cut a reed from the reed bed. He cut seven holes. The reed flute player's lips touched the reed flute and it cried for help. What made it play was not the lip, but the breath in it. God created from himself all the creatures from the single-celled to the most complex, but he only blew from his own soul to humans. The breath blown into the reed flute expresses this. The inside of the reed flute is empty. It only makes a sound with the breath blown into it. While one end of the reed flute is open, the other end is in the mouth of the musician. And if he were the perfect man, then the sound heard from the open end would be the sound of God. Humans are also an instrument, like this reed flute. Whenever a human becomes a perfect man, a real sheikh, then he will become a human like a human and will be emptied by being saved from himself. He becomes God's voice, God's mirror, and ascends and reunites with his God and completes his evolution. The whirling dance ceremony relates the story of the creation of the Almighty Spirit called the Light of Muhammad that starts with the command B, the start of the descent and later the ascent towards becoming a perfect man. After the death of Mevlana, the whirling dance was connected to a number of principles and starts by praising the Prophet Muhammad. To praise the Prophet is to praise the Almighty Spirit that has descended from the abstract to the concrete world. All of the Prophets are a reflection of this Almighty Spirit, that is, God, and all of them convey the same message. So to praise the Prophets is to praise God. The double drum beats heard express the command B, given when God was creating the universe. The reed flute part following this symbolizes the divine breath that gave life to lifeless bodies, of the light of God that descended to the concrete world with this command. After the reed flute part, the whirling Mevlevis and the Sheikh strike the ground with their hands as bodies that have become alive with this divine breath. It shows their determination to become perfect men for completing the command B as people who have entered the path for seeking the truth. Spiritual teachers, the representatives of Mevlana, are the greatest guides for people on the path of seeking the truth. This part is called the Ritual Whirling of Veled, named after Sultan Veled, the son of Mevlana, who connected the whirling dance ceremony to a number of rules. This greeting, given by looking at the faces and into the eyes, has the meaning of sanctifying the manifestation of God that exists in every human being. The ritual whirling of Veled symbolizes the need for traversing all the paths under the accompaniment of a guide. 
It has the meaning that the best path is to stand in the footsteps of a mature sheikh who has previously passed this way and to advance from the points where he stepped. In this part, the sheikh and the whirling mevlevis greet each other in front of the sheikh's official post and when passing the point exactly opposite to it, the post is mevlana's and while it symbolizes the divine nature, the opposite end symbolizes the nature of human beings. There is an imaginary line between these two ends called the equator. This line is the shortest path for reaching God. The right side of the circle symbolizes the descent from divine nature and the left side symbolizes the ascent from the natural world of human beings to the divine nature. The right expresses the descent to the material world and the left expresses the ascent to spiritual perfection. The right is the known, visible world, while the left is the unknown, invisible world. The greetings given by the sheikh and the whirling mevlevis at both ends are the greetings they give when passing from one world to another. According to Mevlana, if the other world is a sea, then this world is only a bubble. The ritual whirling of Veled makes exactly three tours. This symbolizes the three forms of obtaining knowledge. The Holy Quran says that God is closer to human beings than an artery. Science is the first step for understanding this closeness. It means to know God through knowledge. There is a soul in your soul. Seek that soul. Seek the hidden jewel in the mountain of the body. O oh friend, seek with all your might, but not outside. Seek within yourself what you are looking for. Thus, the dervish who hears within him that there is another life, another self, first of all learns theoretically all the knowledge he can learn on this subject. However, this knowledge acquired is not through reasoning, but it is necessary that it be understood by personally feeling and experiencing it. The knowledge given is about something that is not known or recognized at all. The person is completely in the dark. However, suddenly, one day a warmth comes. It is felt that a fire is burning nearby. Even the crackles of this fire are heard. Even if the fire is not seen, the entire body feels its heat. Thus, this is certainty of knowledge, the first step of learning. As the uncleanness created by the emotions of greed, grudge, hatred, anger and fear in the hearts of humans are cleansed and eliminated, the curtain hiding the truth slowly rises, the eye of the heart opens, and the person sees the fire of the divine light within himself. This is the certainty of essence step, the second stage of learning. The attribute of this is to remain in a trance, in a state of ecstasy. When the dawn of the love of God scatters light, souls rise to eternity after the light. The love of God reaches such heights, it sees its friend with every breath. It is very dangerous to enter into the certainty of essence step without a spiritual teacher. The dervish can easily lose the path when confronted with the revelations he saw or thought he saw. The dervish's knowledge of God should be made clear with the help of a spiritual teacher. Do not ever suppose the easygoing person to be like yourself. He is entirely a looking, seeing, and silence. If you have an ear that can hear, the truth is this.
to reach God occurs by abandoning your essence. Be quiet when you arrive at the universe of intuition and seeing. There the tongue and lips become quiet. Only the eyes talk. There is still a dualism, the dualism of humans and God. When a human erases and throws out all signs of selfishness, desires to possess, and the slightest remains of pride in the essence, including the desire to reach God, when he is purified of all wants and desires and becomes a nothing, then the ego disappears completely. When this artificial ego that we thought was ours disappears, then a way of life appears which is unknown to ordinary humans. Come to your senses, O oh, you who are deceived by appearance. Know that this soul lying in your heart hides a friend. The soul is the essence of emotion. Feeling is the essence of body. Abandon the body, the emotions, the soul. He is the one who remains. This is the certainty of God, the third stage. Now, the things the person feels and sees have become himself. Love came. It was like the blood that flows in my skin and veins. It emptied me from my ego and filled me with God. God has enveloped all the minute particles of my body. Only a name has remained to me, and he became all that remained. The person has now reached the stage of saintliness. The person who reaches this stage has completed the evolution, realized his potential, and has become the perfect man, and has started to reflect the awareness of God. He has returned to the beginning and ascended to his place before the formation of the universe. The whirling Mevlevis complete three tours by following the sheikhs assumed to have passed through all of these paths with the hope of reaching the stage of certainty of God. The ritual whirling of Veled finishes with the sheikh passing to the post. Human beings, whose bodies were created from clay and soil, must first be baked to reach the stage of certainty of God. This baking is needed so that the novice candidate's heart can endure when the day of meeting with God arrives. The most difficult stage of this maturation is the struggle with one's own self. There is such a difficult fight that this was called the great war against self. Our emotions, such as anger, jealousy, greed, hatred, and fear, our thoughts, the customs and practices that we have internalized, and our identity have formed a wall that prevents us from seeing the sacred light within us. All of these are just like a layer of dust and dirt that spoils the appearance of the mirror. In order to see the mirror, in which God will be revealed, this layer of dust and dirt must be cleaned. The maturation of Mevlana and the cleaning of the mirror of his heart, besides his personal efforts, were realized by his first two teachers. The rest of it, in his own words, was left to the grace of God. This favor came to Mevlana in the shape of Shems of Tabriz. Has it been observed at all that any chemical substance would abandon its own existence without being heated and combined with another? Thus, Shems was this fire that would heat and burn Mevlana, and Mevlana's essence was firewood. Shems came to do away with it. Social position, belief, reason, fears, everything but everything constituting an obstacle had to be burned in this fire. I want to burn and be burned. Try to awaken that fire in your heart. 
Light the fire of love in your soul with a fire. Set all the words on fire, all of the thoughts. Mevlana had to abandon the known so that he could reach the unknown. For this, Shems even tore up page by page Mevlana's books, his most valued treasure, and threw them in water. When even a fragment of shame and pride does not remain, and when the layer forming one's own importance melts, only a void remains. Very few people can come face to face without trembling with anxiety at first, with the knowledge that they are no one. It is misunderstood with the coldness of death and the silence of graveyards. However, it was necessary for one to become accustomed to this void for progressing to the degrees of perception after this. It is only at that time that the mind attains peace and that the truth shows itself after this calm and quietness when the ego, the curtain between, that constantly says by making noise and clatter, I want this, I want that, is removed, then God shows himself. Actually, God was always there. He was everywhere. It was necessary to discover him, not to seek him. This state is not an enthusiastic trance. It is an unknown, completely different awareness, or more accurately, perspective. This is the opening of the eye of the heart. In the sayings of the Hindus, it is the opening of the chakra of the heart. There is the Almighty Spirit in this place where there is nothing other than silence, where there is no emotion, thought, and form. It is the light of Muhammad in Islamic terminology. Mevlana, who realized the union of existence and unlimited void, became like a reed flute in which only the breath of God circulated. We are like a reed flute. Our melody is from you. We are like a mountain. Our echo is from you. Actually, we and our existence are composed of nothing. My God, who shows mortals like him exists, the real essence is composed of you. All of us are a lion in appearance. However, like lions on flags, the plague assaults from time to time of those lions is because of the wind. The playings of the lions on the flag are seen, but the winds that make them play are not seen. First of all, Shems lit a spark in Mevlana's heart, and later he lit a flame, and now it transformed into a furiously burning fire. However, there was one final obstacle, Mevlana's dependence on Shems. When the time comes, it is even necessary to light and burn the dependence felt for a spiritual teacher. Mevlana explains this as follows. Two live birds who are connected to each other, even if they have four wings, they cannot fly because there is a duality. Whereas, if one of the birds dies, then the other can fly because there is no more duality. Shems withdrew and disappeared. According to a rumor, he was killed and thrown into a well in Konya. This regret at separation burned Mevlana so much that now nothing remained to remind him of Jalalitin Rumi. As in the example of the planets in the skies, Mevlana also started to revolve around that sun which started to shine within him. I am becoming enlightened with your light. I am becoming exalted with your exaltation. When I was one, I am becoming 100. As you become me, I am revolving around you. When I become you, I am revolving 
around myself. Mevlana starts to turn in the void created by the disappearance of Shems, the sun outside of him. Seven hundred years before our time, at the jeweler's market in Konya, perhaps a bang was experienced by him in which all the secrets were scattered around when he started to whirl. Do not ask how that beloved fits into my heart. How many thousands of souls live in a single body? One thousand harvests are winnowed from a single grain of wheat. There are thousands of universes in the eye of a needle. The whirling dance is the ending of amazements and the starting of admirations because for the perfect man there is nothing secret. He discovers his own body with the kindness and gift of God. He finds large and small worlds, that is, human beings and the whole world, including the earth and sky, are in his own body. Human beings are a universe, and whatever there is in the universe is in them. Mevlana, whose heart's eye was opened, was also seeing. He was seeing that everything was revolving. Everything was revolving both around itself and around the sun. Oh, the whirling sky that revolves on top of our heads. You are also doing like me with the love of the sun. The wretched or the fortunate, every single atom is smitten with the sun to the extent of not being able to say anything. According to Mevlana, love is the reason why atoms revolve around the sun. As for love, it is the condition of knowing the truth directly. When his light shows itself uncurtained, neither sky remains nor earth, neither sun remains nor moon, other than God's essence. Atoms enlightened with the light of God are entranced with his ecstasy. Mevlana, that scholar of scholars, went with this rapture and in his place came a man close to fifty who wrote poetry with enthusiasm, who played with children in the street, who saw no difference between Muslims and Jews, and who bowed in front of a beggar woman as if he were bowing in front of a sheikh. Mevlana loved people, not because they were humans or for the contributions they made to society, but he loved them for that trembling, small, divine light that he saw in the heart of everyone. He loved people because of the Creator. In any case, there was nothing else for him other than God. Mevlana, who is known as Rumi in the West, neither established a tarika during his life nor set the whirling dance to the rules of today. He only would revolve and dance without following any rules, as he felt from within when he entered into ecstasy. The whirling dance for him was a path going to the heavens, a door opening to the heavens, a flight from life to death, a flying away from death to immortality. In the whirling dance part of the ceremony, connected to the rules according to the views and philosophy of Mevlana, the dervishes' cloaks thrown to the ground mean for humans to push aside the world with the backs of their hands, to strip themselves of their personalities and essences, and to abandon the God-sent blessings of the world. The black dervish cloak represents the world and daily concerns. The whirling dance starts with kissing in turn the hands of the sheikh and the sheikh kissing their tall felt hats. The tall hats made of pounded felt are a sign of being a member of the Mevlevis. 
What a sheikh kisses is this Mevlevi identity. The whirling dervishes almost symbolize in form the saying of the Prophet, die before dying. He crosses his hands and holds the tips of his shoulders and it represents Alif, the first letter of the Arabic alphabet that is composed of a straight line or the number one. This has the meaning of, I bear witness to the unity of God, not only with my tongue, but with my whole existence, with my whole body. The tall felt hat is the tombstone of the ego, and the white inner garment is the shroud of the ego. Thus, the whirling dervish kills his ego before dying bodily and opens his arms and starts to turn. cry out with silent cries to the skies. Here I am, beating my feet. My ego is under my feet. You are everywhere. Your splendor in every direction. While dancing, the right hand is above as if in prayer. The left hand is turned below, as if to say, We receive from God and spread to the people. We do not keep anything for ourselves. We are nothing but a form existing in appearance, acting as an intermediary. While the whirling dervish keeps his left foot fixed on the floor, the right foot revolves around it. He says, God silently within himself at every revolution. The whirling dervish says God with every revolution. dervish chants silently from within and from his heart. There is no night in our day because the sun of our day is love. Lovers have sunk to such depths that in a sea of love, moans, cries for help, saying, Oh my God, are not heard. Even when the whirling dance reaches the height of ecstasy, the dervish cannot break the general rules of the ceremony and should revolve without bumping into another dervish or without spoiling the general harmony of the ceremony, like planets in the solar system. There is a great duty for the head of the whirling dervishes. He shows them the places where they will dance and prevents them from becoming too close to each other by walking among them and gathering them in a specific place while dancing. The whirling dance section is composed of four greetings representing the four stages that will be passed on the path to truth. The first greeting you see symbolizes obtaining knowledge about God and learning religious obligations. At the end of each greeting the whirling dervishes withdraw into groups of two, three, or four, and by leaning on one another, greet the point of the pole in the center that symbolizes Mevlana. This grouping in groups of two, three, or four symbolizes solidarity. 
The whirling dervishes start the second greeting with the permission of the sheikh. This greeting symbolizes the tariqah stage, which makes the knowledge of God and the unity of God apparent. The third greeting, the truth stage, symbolizes the termination by destroying him in the supreme being, that is, the annihilation in God stage. Greeting is the expression of the spiritual knowledge stage. Just as Mevlana said, it is always he who exists and who becomes destroyed. He is the source of both pain and pleasure. You do not have an eye that will see, or else you would have seen. It is only he who exists throughout in your existence. The dervish who strips off from human nature and wraps himself in divine nature is finally immortal in the spiritual knowledge stage and has reached the stage of an eternal union with God. Spiritual knowledge is returning to serve again as a human being, in spite of being a saint who is aware of all the secrets. This is the highest level in Islam. Born with new knowledge, he aims to return to the world, to the place where the journey started to serve mankind. He would give to the people what he received from God, and he would tolerate their faults. During the first three greetings, the whirling dervishes turn around themselves and around the place where they dance. At the fourth greeting, the dervishes remain where they are and only turn around the sheikh. This has the meaning of persisting at the stop of oneness, unity. The head of the dervishes now keeps everyone at the outer orbit and does not allow anyone to enter the inner orbit because the sheikh also joins in the final greeting. This whirling dance is the post-whirling dance. The sheikh does the whirling dance at the center on the shortest path for reaching God. That is called the equator. The dervish, who perceives the reason for the divine orders and creation, has defeated his ego and complied with the order of the prophet, die before dying, and the call of the Holy Quran return to your God and enter into the group of my best human beings. During the 
gradual retreat of the sheikh to his post by dancing, the final instrumental improvisation begins. This is the expression of the person's mature, tranquil, calm state of radiating light. The final instrumental improvisation ends with the arrival of the whirling shake in front of the post and the verse meaning both the East and the West are gods. God's face is in whatever direction you turn is recited. When the verse from the Holy Quran is finished, then the head of the whirling dervishes starts a prayer. بارك الله وبركات كلام الله را سمارا سفارا وفارا وجد حالات مردان هدا را اول عظمت بزرگی هدا و رسالات According to Mevlana, human beings embrace God when the curtain of the world between human beings and God is lifted. What damage is coming to the sun and the moon from setting? You have seen the setting. Now watch the rising. To you it looks like it is setting, but it is rising. The grave looks like a prison, but it is the salvation of the soul. Death, which is a salvation, is the wedding night for Mevlana, and the ceremonies organized every year on the 17th of December in Konya and in various places of the world are an exchange of Bayram greetings for the Mevlevis. Mevlana's students in Konya wrote down everything he said and ensured that not even a single line of his beautiful words and poems was lost. And they have preserved in Konya for exactly 700 years the clothes he wore and other articles of his. At the entrance gate to the tomb were the sarcophagi and belongings of Mevlana and the other great Mevlevi dervishes are located. It is written, this place is the Kaaba of lovers. Those who come here incomplete are completed. After the symbolic exchange of Bayram greetings, a short prayer is recited and the whirling dance ceremony ends with all the dervishes and the musicians following the sheikh in leaving the place by greeting the post. People from every class, denomination, race and religion, sultans, emirs, scholars, uneducated people, imams, priests and rabbis, attended Mevlana's funeral. Wasn't it he who said, Let whoever exists come. Let the non-Muslims, idol worshippers, 
and the Zoroastrians come. Wasn't it he who said, Seventy-two nations hear their secrets from us. In fact, it is said that some Christians and Jews attending Mevlana's funeral said, We understood the reality of Jesus Christ and Moses and all the prophets from his clear words. How beautifully Mevlana expressed in the following few words the nothingness of human beings' worldly values. The Indians, the people of Kipchak, the Byzantines, and the Abyssinians. All of them are all alone in their graves and have the same color. How nicely they are lying there. However, on the other hand, for Mevlana, human beings are creatures who carry the divine light in their hearts and who can reflect God in the mirrors of their hearts. You, that is a copy of that sacred book, you are the mirror of art in creation. Whatever you wish, wish it from yourself. Find it in yourself. Whatever you look for is in yourself, and that is you. Mevlana summarized his entire life spent in superhuman efforts in this way. It is not more than three words. All my life is these three words. I was raw. I was baked. I was burned.